to another Team Tiller product tour. Today, we will walk you through how to set up the privacy settings in Team Tiller. We of course need to show you where you find the privacy settings. You find the privacy settings by the right corner. You will see your company name, you click there, and then you will see settings. You go to settings. So when you go into settings, you will just scroll down until you see data and privacy. So where we will start here will be, of course be the approval checkboxes. So as you will see here, when you go in here, is that everything is disabled by default. The reason behind this is basically because we already do ask for their consent. And you will see this if you go to a job ad. So I will just quickly show you how this looks like right now. When they submit their application, they also admit to the privacy policy. So that is a consent. However, if you do like to add another layer on top of this, where the candidate needs to tick a box that they actually do admit and give consent to their um, application. You will then see here that you have one for job application. So just for the application itself, you can then have an approval checkbox and you can say whatever you want here, something to do with the privacy policy, of course. But we have a default text, so if you want to use a default text, you don't need to do anything. But you also have a second one. And this is, of course, for future job consents. Basically meaning, when they apply, even though they don't get that specific job, you will still store their candidate information. So maybe, if you like to use the information later, you could, of course, use the secondary checkbox as well for future job. You also have one for connect, since you're also storing connected candidates. So if I just, like, enable this, you will see it like this, and then I press save. When I press save, so no, now you will see when I go back to the actual uh, job that there's a difference now. So I'll just click on update. So instead of just reading, I now also need to check the approval boxes here that I actually do give approval for this. This is of course something that is optional to use. You don't need to have this if you don't want to. But if you like to, this is the functionality behind it. The next setting uh, is, of course, the GDPR setting, so data retention. So when the candidate have given their consent of being stored in the system, that's, of course, when you need to decide for how long you want to keep the information in the system. So first of all, with the GDPR, you can store data for up to 24 months. So the first thing you need to do is to say, when does the permission expire? And you can, of course, keep it up to 24 months, but you also have the option to keep it for less, of course. In this specific case, or this example, I will just put after 24 months. Then you will see here, there's three different options, basically. So one option that you don't do anything after the permission expires. You have the secondary option, which is called opt out. Opt out basically means that after 24 months, you will ask the candidate that, or you will tell the candidate that we will automatically extend your permission. However, if the candidate wish to be deleted, they need to opt out. You will then have an email template. We have one prepared for you, but however, if you do like to amend this and say something differently in your own wording, you can of course do that as well. But this is the email that goes out. You ask or you tell the candidate that you will keep their information and extend the permission automatically. But if they do not like to be kept, you will then ask the candidate to click on remove my data. If they click on remove my data, you're obligated to of course delete their data accordingly to the GDPR. Then we have the third option. The third option is opt-in. Opt-in is basically the reverse. So you will tell the candidate that we want to keep your information, but you will need to click extend yourself. So you asking the candidate to opt in instead. If they do not opt in, their permission will be expired, eventually meaning you will have to delete them. So you pick the option that you feel is the best for you, of course. We will never give you any recommendations of this because this is, of course, up to you as the controller of the system to set up. But we can assure you that whatever you pick here will, of course, be compliant to the GDPR 
as long as you delete the relevant information when it's needed. You then have another one that is source and refer candidates. So what is this then? What is the difference? The difference between this and the application or the permissions here is that in Team Taylor, you do have the possibility of adding candidates yourself. Basically meaning you could receive candidates by email and you just want to upload them into the system. That's easy to do, of course. But what happens here is that the candidate never really gave you the permission to keep them in Team Taylor. So in this case, you can only store that kind of data for up to 90 days. So I'm going to pick just like 30 days in this case. And then you will see you only have one option here. And that option is opt-in. Basically meaning you will ask for permission because you need to have permission to keep candidates into the system. So this is my setup right now. I'm going to choose the opt-out. I'm going to do the opt-in here after 30 days and that one after 24 months. And then, you, of course, you need to set up the GDPR manager because the GDPR manager will be the one that receives all the notifications when someone needs to be deleted, if a permission is soon to be expired, whatever it might be, you want someone here that controls all of these notifications so you never forget to delete anyone or you don't keep candidates that you don't have permission to keep. You save your settings and you're now down with the GDPR settings. But of course, to make this easier for you, we also have the automatic data retention or deletion, actually. The deletion here is to make this automatic. So I would, I would like to skip these three parts here and just focus on the last two. Because the last two has to do with the GDPR, of course. So you will see the first one here, delete candidate who submit a removal request. That's for anyone that opts out in the system. You will need to delete them. So why not make it automated? So as you can see here, if they do opt out, I will flag them for deletion. You pick the number of days and then you're done. The system will automatically delete these candidates based on that rule that you set up here. Then you also have one for deleting candidates with missing or per expired permissions. That's of course the people or the candidates that didn't opt in in the first place. So if they never opt in or if their permission has expired, you will either need to ask for new ones or delete them in the system. So same thing here, you flag the candidates for deletion after a amount of days and then you press save. You will never have to worry about keeping candidates that you're not supposed to store in the system because you do not have permission to store them. So once this is set up, you're completely compliant with your candidate pool and you're not keeping candidate data that you're not supposed to do. And then of course, we have the privacy policy. Since Team Taylor is more or less like the service here, and you are the control of your system, you will of course like need to check this, but the thing with our privacy policy is by default. So this is what happens in Team Taylor. So of course, everything you see here and everything the candidate reads, that actually what's happened, what the, can what the candidate actually accepts. However, if you do need to make any amendments in your own wording, or if you just wanna add another section of something, uh, because that's the company standard, you can always amend, of course, the privacy policy if you like to. So this is just a place where you amend or edit or just keep it like it is. That's totally up to you. Then, of course, you also set the contact person because you do want to have a contact person for privacy questions. Press save and then you're pretty much done with the privacy policy. Last but not least, we have the cookies. So the cookies, as you can see here, is always default to be recommended. However, you always have the right, you always are obligated to do whatever you want here, of course. We do recommend this because of course, like this is the standard bar for across all different websites. However, if you do want to change this, you do have several options here. You do also have other options to add other cookies because this is something the candidate accept. So when I go into website, I do accept the cookies because you, then you will be able to see my data. If this is what we do in the system, so everything that we keep in the system, you will see here. If you feel like there's, you use the data for something else, then of course you can add your own cookies as well, because this is something the candidate do accept when you keep and store the data. 
And that's more or less everything to do with the data and privacy in Team Tiller. So with all that, thank you so much for watching and thank you for choosing Team Tailor. I'll see you in the next video.